You're listening to the Hockey Podcast Network. New shows every day. Find us at thehockeypodcastnetwork.com or wherever you get your podcasts from. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Red Wings Rant, where tirades and impassion pleas for your Detroit Red Wings finally have a home. Today, we're going to be talking about Mitchell Stevens and the journey that brought him to our fourth line this year for the Detroit Red Wings. Of course, starting the season playing all 10 games, having a pretty good start, showing off the speed, showing off uh, some skill in the faceoff dot. Not, not every game, but uh, th- that skill is there. Um <clears throat> But before we do that, we have a couple of bits of business that we want to take care of. Of course, everything that uh, you see on uh, Red Wings Rant brought to you by the Hockey Podcast Network and sponsored by DraftKings. We hope you guys will check that out. Use promo code THPN. That is in reference to the Hockey Podcast Network so that you can unlock exclusive offers on DraftKings Sportsbook uh, when you're going online to uh, make a few extra bucks with your own hockey knowledge. I also want to bring up this very show is brought to you by our good buddy Tristan, who has been begging for us to do a, a spotlight on Mitchell Stevens. So here it is. A shout out to Tristan. Uh, but going forward, what we'd like to do once a month is a show just like this. And we need the requests from you. So if you could throw in the comments who you want us to cover going forward, it could be Simon Edmondson. It could be Sebastian Cosa. We could be taking a look at how Dylan Larkin got to be where he's at. I don't care. We'll do we'll do a pick. We'll go through the comments. But you need to comment on this video down below who you want to see. And what we're going to do is when we pick you, we're going to give you a $25 gift card to the NHL shop so you can pick up whatever you want. And that all starts with Tristan, my man, is going first. So he made the request over and over for Mitchell Stevens. Uh, if you want to make sure that you're winning this, of course, follow along on our episodes, subscribe to this channel, watch our episodes, and do what, uh, do what Tristan did. He bugged us nonstop to get this video going, and uh, here we go. Let's get some of the basics out of the way, brought to you by EliteProspects.com. Mitchell Stevens, born February 5th, 1997, in Peterborough, Ontario, Canada, and right now we're watching some highlights from Mitchell Stevens' youth team, the Toronto Marlboros. Mitchell Stevens right now stands at five foot eleven and 190 pounds, and of course is our right-handed shot and drafted by the Tampa Bay Lightning in 2015 in the second round. That would be Tampa Bay's first pick in the 2015 draft. And of course, as we all know, the GM at the time and running the Iser plan through Tampa Bay, Mr. Steve Iserman. Now, when Steve Eisman traded for Mitchell Stevens, that wasn't his first go-around in the state of Michigan because he did spend four seasons with the Saginaw Spirit in the OHL. Of course, that happening before he was moved to the London Knights. But those four seasons helped him <clears throat> become the strong offensive player he is that elite prospects alluded to in their scouting report. He has the perfect amount of resiliency, they said, character and attitude to play key roles and not back down. He's a nimble skater with a threatening top speed, physically willing to pursue the puck in the hard areas of the ice, smart and crafty defensively, very good hands and puck skills, quick, accurate release on his shot that can fool a lot of goalies. All in all, an offensive, upwardly mobile presence that the opposition can't let out of their sight. And of course, this is what helped Steve Eiserman make his decision to uh, draft him in the 2015 draft at the number 33 overall pick. And uh, what helped him start his career with the Syracuse Crunch in the 2015-16 season. What can't be missed is Mitchell Stevens' performances in the World Juniors games, where in the under-18s, he was a 10-point and 7-game performer. And of course, uh, racking up 2 points in 5 games as he moved on to the U-20s in the 2015-16 season. And then the 16-17 season actually racked up a point per game in the uh, World Juniors for the U-20s. Mitchell Stevens' first full season with the Syracuse Crunch was in the 2017-18 campaign where he racked up 41 points as an AHL rookie in 70 games. He actually even ended up being an all-star that season while being the second-line center for the Syracuse Crunch 
and uh, getting people pretty excited for the next season to see if he could roll right into that first line and continue all that success. Unfortunately, Mitchell Stevens only played 32 games in the following year's campaign because of two major injuries, one setting him back for a month, and the next injury after returning for two games set him back for two months. Now, he still showed quite a bit of development and racked up 24 points in those 32 games, uh, but it was something from the Mitchell Stevens perspective. You would have liked to see that full season to see where he would end up, which, of course, resulted in the 1920 season, him starting with the Syracuse Crunch instead of the Tampa Bay Lightning. In the NHL, it always seems like uh, these roller coaster journeys for players like uh, Mitchell Stevens uh, always seem to wrap around things that uh, are hit close to home. But Mitchell Stevens' first go around in the NHL is actually closely related to Adam Ernie being moved to the Detroit Red Wings. Tampa Bay Lightning were looking internally to uh, fill the role or fill the hole that Adam Ernie left. And uh, after some Brief stints in uh, Syracuse, all eyes were on Mitchell Stevens to take over. After Stevens dealt with his fair share of bad luck, hitting the injury bug the season prior, just seemed like it was more Mitchell Stevens' bad luck as COVID ended this season and his first stint with the Tampa Bay Lightning and his first chance to play some NHL hockey. Mike, can you believe it? DraftKings is recognizing our favorite sport. We do a podcast about hockey, and we are finally able to discuss the fact that they're an official sports betting partner of the NHL. Um, let's let's go, right? That's what I'm ready to say. Matt, I've had enough talking about the other sports. Stop for a big boy sport. The <laughs> NHL. That's National Hockey League. That season is underway. DraftKings Sportsbook and unofficial. Sports betting partner of the National Hockey League has an unbelievable offer to celebrate the greatest sport on ice, nay, the greatest sport on earth. <laughs> New customers can bet just $1 on any NHL game and win $100 in free bets if either team scores a goal. Doesn't matter if it's a one time clapper. Oh, gotta be a, or a slapper, maybe, or a deft uh, deflection. However, they light the lamp, you win. If sports what if it's some nasty sauce? All right, go What on. if it's an empty netter? Still counts on the stat sheet, my man. If Sportsbook isn't available in your state yet, DraftKings won't leave you empty-handed. Everyone can play for huge cash prizes all season long with DraftKings Daily Fantasy Sports Contests. DraftKings is giving all new customers a free shot at millions of dollars in total prizes with their first deposit. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now and use promo code THPN. Throw down $1 on any NHL game and win 100 in free bets if either team scores a goal this week one puck in the net nets you a big win with promo code thpn at DraftKings sportsbook an official sports betting partner of the nhl must be 21 or older new jersey indiana or pennsylvania only new customers only minimum five dollar deposit and one dollar wager required one per customer restrictions apply see draftkings.com slash sportsbook for details gambling promo call 1-800-GAMBLER As we take a quick look at the evolving hockey bar charts from Mitchell Stevens' 38 games with the Tampa Bay Lightning in his rookie season, uh, you can see that as these bars go higher in the deeper blue color that they do turn, the better he's performing against the rest of the NHL. So from the expected goals against per 60 and Corsi against per 60, Mitchell Stevens had a fantastic season. And considering that he was brought into the NHL to do just that, and of course that's what the Red Wings see, for his future as a fourth-line center with the Detroit Red Wings, this is everything that you wanted to see out of this kid in his first season. So job well done through what? It's worth noting, too, that Mitchell Stevens did all that and earned all this ice time while playing with the soon-to-be Stanley Cup champion Tampa Bay Lightning. Uh, to be a rookie and to have that sort of pressure on you and to be put in that sort of prominent spot, it could get out of hand for some guys who are that young. But for Mitchell Stevens... As we clearly saw, he performed very well, probably beyond expectations from that defensive standpoint. Now, Mitchell Stevens did go on to play seven games. He racked up a point, but was not an every night performer in the playoffs. It was something for Tampa Bay as they were going through these um, unseen times that they were struggling to find uh, some consistency in the playoffs that year. But on their way to the Stanley Cup, Mitchell Stevens did get his fair share of time 
And hey, that guy's got his name etched on the Stanley Cup. Now, after winning the Stanley Cup, the Tampa Bay Lightning slotted Mitchell Stevens in as an every night performer, and he was that for four games. Unfortunately, Stevens did get his legs tangled in with David Savard, as you can see here. And this turned into a lower body injury that kept Stevens out for at the time was indefinite but would end up being from January all the way till April. Stevens would have a brief stint back with the Syracuse Crunch to get back into skating shape. Actually racked up eight points in four games for the Crunch, uh, and then would make his triumphant return to the Tampa Bay Lightning. The Lightning would only play Mitchell Stevens for three more games the rest of that season, and he did not see a second of playoff ice time. For Mitchell, though, those last three games, no points, was a minus three. Didn't get a lot of ice time. So the Tampa Bay Lightning would go on to win another Stanley Cup. Mitchell Stevens, the odd man out, was seen as expendable. And Steve Eiserman, who had already drafted Stevens, knew there was potential there, saw the speed, and of course, lost a couple of uh, longtime Detroit Red Wings and Darren Helm and Luke Glendening needed to fill some roster spots. So Eiserman came calling. Mitchell Stevens was ready, and the Tampa Bay Lightning were ready to take a draft pick off of Steve Eiserman's hands. And now, uh, Mitchell Stevens is 10 games through his career with the Detroit Red Wings, and uh, so far, it's okay. The narrative behind Stevens' game is that the speed is there. In the preseason, we saw a lot of creativity offensively, but what he's asked to do in the regular season is very different. And he does get a lot of ice time that starts in the defensive zone, in which... He starts in the deficit. So what we see here are some numbers that actually negatively reflect Steven's performance so far through 10 games with the Red Wings. But you do have to keep in mind how often he's asked to be the defensive fourth line forward as opposed to trying to create offense. While that can be a little confusing and you might ask the question, well, wouldn't you want to get a goal if you could get one? Sure, absolutely, but what he's out there to do is be the shutdown defenseman. That we saw in his rookie season where his numbers were actually going through the roof. Mitchell Stevens is tasked with the hard job of focusing on defense first, so these numbers will always skew in this direction. But what we don't see are numbers that are so far below that as Evolving Hockey measures them with the Z-score, and if we had gone down to below the negative one, below the negative two, or even touching the negative three, would mean that He's performing as one of the worst fourth line forwards in the league. Now, when making the direct comparison of Mitchell Stevens and Luke Lindenning, uh, most centers in the league are going to look better than Luke Lindenning. But this is a key element here in regards to where are we upgrading this team. And you need to see little upgrades in each section from that first line down to the fourth line. And as the Red Wings have been able to do each season since the Iser plan started, this would be considered another upgrade of Mitchell Stevens over Luke Glendening. As the Red Wings continue to move along, if Mitchell Stevens can get back to what those rookie numbers look like, of course he was playing with the eventual Stanley Cup champion, Tampa Bay Lightning, but if those numbers can get back to where they were, it is more likely that this turns into a longer relationship. And based on the speed that we've seen, and based on the tenacity that Mitchell Stevens brings to the ice of making sure that he's doing everything he can with every second he gets of ice time to try and limit chances and get the puck moving out of the defensive zone, I think there's a very good chance we do see that return. And if we do, we could have ourselves lined up with a very affordable fourth line center for the Red Wings going forward. By the end of the season, Mitchell Stevens is going to be 25. He also has an expiring contract, which will put him in the restricted free agent status. And Red Wings will have to figure out if this makes sense for them moving forward to put Mitchell Stevens in that fourth line center position. While there isn't a lot that Red Wings fans or even coaching should be able to point to from the fourth line being the detriment to anything going wrong with the Detroit Red Wings, I do still think there's a lot working against Mitchell Stevens, including Michael Rasmussen's play that could be placing him as a for sure center in the bottom six. But there are a lot of opportunities that the Red Wings have already employed and maybe even cheaper options than Mitchell Stevens, considering how young he is and comparing him to the likes of a Sam Gagne, who could still fill out a center role, and how those opportunities could outweigh the value in bringing a Mitchell Stevens back. We also have Jonathan Berger in waiting, and there's still probably an opportunity to bring Chase Pearson in and try him out in the fourth line role as well. 
So while all of these things are stacked up against Mitchell Stevens, it's still important to remember that his main goal should be to try and win faceoffs and limit chances. So as long as Mitchell Stevens can continue to get the puck out of the zone and limit the offensive chances as much as possible, again, considering that 60% of the time he's starting in the defensive zone, I think he'll have a role in the NHL. But with so many things stacked up against Mitchell Stevens, including his expiring contract, the fact that there could be better value contracts found in the free agent market, and of course there being so many options with the Detroit Red Wings through their own prospects, could just mean he'll be the odd man out due to circumstance rather than it actually being about his own performance or play. Now I'm recording this element about uh, 10 games after uh, everything else was recorded, but another thing that's working against Mitchell Stevens is, is he injury prone? Uh, with all the different mentions through this entire episode of chunks of seasons that he's missed, uh, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention that now in this current season in the NHL for the Detroit Red Wings, uh, he's going to be missing a significant amount of time, one of his longest stints away from the game, uh, since he'll be out going from parts of November all the way through the Olympic break, which is going to be November, December, January. Yes, I did hesitate because I forgot what from which month comes next. And then, of course, February, leading to his arrival sometime in March. And that's only a possibility. We don't even know what exact time it's going to be. But, of course, that's working against him as well. While his future with the Detroit Red Wings is up in the air, he does still have a bright future in hockey. I think everything we've seen so far, with especially taking a look at his last stint with the AHL and his eight points in four games, clearly he's meant to be in the NHL right now, or at least given that fair shake. So Mitchell Stevens should get that fair shake for the rest of the season. I think ultimately, again, with a fourth-line role, uh, he could be extremely successful in that role, and the Red Wings probably still locked up one of the better steals of the offseason, trading only a six-round pick to pick up Mitchell Stevens. So watch out for Mitchell Stevens the rest of the season. Shout out to Tristan for suggesting we take a deeper look at his past and his career and see what brought him to the Detroit Red Wings. Kind of fun to see that he got into the NHL because Steve Eisman traded for Adam Ernie. But uh, if you want me to uh, take a deep dive on anybody here with the Detroit Red Wings. If you want to take a look at the prospect list, if you want to take a look at maybe a future prospect, or if you want me to take a look at somebody with some tenure, maybe we want to take a look at Pavel Datsuk or, uh, yeah, like I mentioned earlier, Dylan Larkin, put it in the comments. We'll select somebody once a month. And you know what, Tristan, you've got a $25 gift card headed your way. And whoever I pick, Going forward, we'll also receive that $25 gift card. So if you want to be a part of this, make sure you're subscribing to Red Wings Rant. And um, follow along, like the videos, help us grow a little bit. Maybe that $25 gift card will be a little bit bigger next time. All right. Thank you for tuning in, everybody. I hope you have a good one. And uh, as always, let's go Red Wings.